Hey everyone, in today's video, I have three great activities to share with you that's really going to help develop your students' oral language. These activities are going to be easy to implement both at school and at home, so if you are a parent working with children at home, or if you are a homeschool teacher, or if you are a K through two elementary school teacher, this video will apply to you. Now I have done tons of writing videos in the past and I have always shared that oral language precedes written language. And what that means of course is that our students if they cannot think of these things, that they cannot say these sentences aloud, they can't write them, right? Not only do students need to be able to brainstorm and come up with ideas for what to write, but they also need to be able to orally state it. And that doesn't just mean a list of brainstormed ideas, they need to orally state things in complete sentences if we want them to write a complete sentence. Now I have a few sentence writing videos that look like this right here, um, and in there we go a little more in depth about how to take oral language and turn it into writing, specifically with sentences. Uh, but in this video, I'm just going to share three activities that really help promote that oral language with your students. These are simple things that you can go ahead and implement in your classroom or at home, and they're also going to increase your students' accuracy around vocabulary. We know when teaching vocabulary, not only do we want to teach students more words, we want to increase their breadth of vocabulary, but we also want to increase their depth of vocabulary and how well they know these words, so these activities are going to help with that as well. So if you're ready to dive in and hear these activities, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, let's get started. All right, activity number one is to implement a question of the day. This is a super simple activity that you can do that's highly effective with your students. And there's a few easy ways to do this, but essentially the premise here is you're going to ask your students a question and they have to go ahead and respond. Now, when you would do this, it seems like naturally a great time would be at morning meeting. That is when I would always do it. We always had a very structured morning meeting in our first grade classroom where we had a greeting. And at the bottom, there was always a question. Now, sometimes it was content related, but oftentimes it would ask them, how they're feeling today, or what is your favorite season, or describe what you did over the weekend. Now, not only does this naturally build community and allow students to converse and talk to one another and share things from their own lives, but also this is a great oral language activity. This is the perfect time to make sure your students are speaking in complete sentences and for you to go ahead and model how to answer these questions in complete sentences. Remember, everything needs to be explicitly taught. We shouldn't just assume that our students know how to speak in complete sentences using conjunctions or complete sentences while making a list of things. So this is a great time to do just that. Now, while this activity is as simple as posing a question to your class each day and having them respond, there are a few things you can do more purposefully to help kind of amp up this type of oral language activity. The first thing I like to make sure I do is give a variety of questions to my students where their responses are going to be varied. And what I mean by that is especially since we always talk about how oral language comes before writing, you want your students to express different types of thoughts that they will be writing about. So for example, I will give them opportunities to share narratives for them to tell me a story. Usually we start with a personal narrative. So tell me about what you did after school yesterday. Or what would you do on your dream vacation, right? This allows students to kind of come up with a story, either telling about themselves or make up a story and think about a sequence of events, a things they would like to do. Ask your students opinions when the season changes into spring. What is your favorite activity to do in the spring and why? Here, not only are students getting used to sharing their opinions aloud, but they're also hearing what that first complete sentence of an opinion writing paper might sound like. My favorite activity to do in the spring is to go for a walk. That sounds like the start of many different opinion writing essays I have heard as a first grade teacher. Now guess what, as the year goes on and you ask more opinion questions, we start to add that word because, and we let them do it verbally. Again, my favorite activity to do in the spring is go on a walk because, and then I can share why. And of course you wanna do this with informative prompts as well. So tell me what you know about your favorite sport or your favorite animal, something like that, right? But with each of these different types of prompts, students have to kind of rework the oral sentence that they're going to say aloud. And again, if students are able to form these sentences in their head and aloud, then they're able to write them on paper later on. So you definitely wanna be purposeful about the types of questions you are asking your students. Now, another little tip around this activity is to provide a sentence starter as 
needed or a sentence frame. Um, I mentioned how we might want to share our opinion and then use the word because. This is a great time to model how you're going to answer each question. I always do that first as the teacher. I go ahead and share my answer aloud and sometimes I'll go ahead and write that sentence frame if students need to use it. If we're practicing using the word because, I will go ahead and ask an opinion question and then my sentence frame will say my favorite activity to do in spring is blank because blank and that will be up there for my students to go ahead and fill in those blanks and that way they are practicing saying it aloud. Um, I also mentioned doing something like making lists, right? Name three sweet treats you enjoy. Now many of your K through two students might just want to answer that by saying, oh, cake, brownies, and cookies right? They've answered your question, but this is where you want to, you know, teach them and kind of guide them to answering that in a complete sentence. So for example, they might say three of my favorite sweet treats are cookies, brownies, and cake or whatever ones I just said before. And then when you actually write this out for your students, they can see where those commas go in a list of items or a series of items. This is going to help them tremendously when they have to apply that to their own writing. So definitely ask a variety of questions, provide sentence frames. It really helps with kind of reteaching and getting students used to answering incomplete sentences. Um, and then also what I would like to do is I would always type up their responses on the digital slides that we do. So for morning meeting, way back when, of course I had um, chart paper or I just write it on a whiteboard. Now many teachers use slides and I will go ahead and use slides when I am subbing and when we ask our question I simply type out the response that each student has so they can see it on the board. I also like to have a little microphone or something you can pass around so that way each student really has the floor when they are sharing their answer. So to sum it up, activity number one is a very simple one and that is to implement a question of the day. Now if you are a homeschool teacher, you can definitely still do this with your student. Um, again, you wanna think about what types of questions you're asking and the only thing that's different here is you don't have to listen to 18 responses and type out 18 responses. You get to do it with just one child or two or three or however many you're teaching at home. Activity number two is to play some simple games. Now you want to be mindful of these games that you're playing, so I'm going to share two of my favorites. The first one is Train of Thought and the second is Guess in 10. Um, they're both by this company called Skillmatics, but Guess in 10 is where I heard of this company because they have a bunch of different themes of this and I'm going to show you how to play both games and why I love them but my family got this one. Um, we have it for Marvel characters, they have it for Animal Planet. There's a bunch of different categories um, and it's great for developing student vocabulary. And then Train of Thought, which I will also share how to play, I found because I was looking up um, the Skillmatics company because I loved this game so much. So let me show you how these work. Okay, so the first game is called Guess in 10 and I explained that there are a ton of different categories for this. And actually, just a side note, as I was taking this out, I found out that apparently Guess in 10 is also available as an app. Um, we have Animal Planet, States of America, Professions, Things That Go, Dinosaurs, and so many more. So apparently, if you look this up, I just said it's called Guess in 10, you could probably find it um, for an app as well. So just a side note, I didn't even notice that I always have the card versions. But for the card version to put over in a center or something for students to play, they will simply pick a card from here. So here, these are all animals. And basically it's like a game of 20 questions, except they have to guess in 10. And students will have to come up with yes or no questions for students to answer. So if I'm playing with a partner, they will be guessing my card and we will have owl. I will give them buzzwords first. I'll say large eyes, predator, beak. Those are their buzzwords. And then they have to ask yes or no questions to try to get closer. Each student will also have three clue cards and they can go ahead and turn in a clue and you'll read one of the clues here on the bottom until they guess the animal. Now these animal ones all have the same types of facts here on the bottom because these are commonly asked questions. So where does the animal live? Uh, or does this animal live in the forest or the Arctic? So students will know, okay, this animal lives in the forest. Is this animal an herbivore or a carnivore? Um, can this animal be domesticated? It'll either be a tiger, which means no, um, or it will be a kitty cat, which means yes. And then two-legged or four-legged. These are common questions that students ask. So the answers are down there in case students don't know. Now, the only downside to this game, I would say for K through two is depending on your uh, reading level of students, they can probably answer many of the questions themselves, but some of the clues like here, a group of us is called a parliament as we are considered to be wise. Many of my first grade students would not know how to say parliament, uh, considered and possibly also wise. 
and then we can go ahead and flip a few more. We have Squirrel, but students also don't need to play this uh, just with a partner. This is a great game you can all play together as well, uh, and you can be the person who's holding the card, and students have to generate those questions. All right, the second game I love is called Train of Thought. And um, again, just like the other game, Guess in 10, you don't need to play it directly by the rules if you don't want to, but just to show you how it works is there's a big pile, this is about, you know, a third of them, of these question cards. And the game is to simply ask one another questions and answer meaningfully and truthfully. So there's six different categories here, three different colors um, of different types of card. And what students would do is flip one over. So let's pretend they flipped this one over right here. And you would ask your opponent this question, which three words do you think best describe you? And they would have to answer the question. Once they have answered the question, they get to keep that card. And then they go ahead and flip another one and answer. Imagine your perfect city. What are some things it would have? So you can see these are already great questions to use for your question of the day. They're pretty meaningful. And again, you would have students answer them in complete sentences. If you could be any age, how old would you be and why? Uh, what's something you're looking forward to? When was the last time someone made you smile? Or sorry, when was the last time you made someone smile? And describe a time someone helped you feel better when you were unwell. So the way to win this game is to simply flip cards and add it. So after you answer it, we can see, okay, this is a purple and it has a little person up here. So we would add that one after we answered it to this pile right here. And we need to gain three in each car of the train. So we have to kind of complete our train of thought. Get it? <laughs> so they will go ahead once they have three of this category or this category or this, whatever one is filled up first, and it has to be one of each color. So. If it's greens, they need to fill up one of these with three, one of these with three, and one of these with three. Now, along the way, there are some other like fun things. Here's a swipe it card that they might get where they can take a suitcase or package card. So here we have a suitcase or a package card and they can take it from someone else who's playing the game to fill up theirs. They also have a wild card. Um, this one says compliment a player of your choice and you get to keep this card. You could put it anywhere and I could say, oh yes, okay, this train is all filled up. Now, as I go on and answer questions, I just have to fill up two of these other categories to win. So again, a very simple game, but it's very meaningful with all the fun questions that students have to answer. So as you can see, those games are great for developing vocabulary, uh, producing questions, answering questions in complete sentences. And that train of thoughts game has so many great questions that you could use as your questions of the day. And it really takes all the pressure off of you uh, to generate a question. They are all in there, so that's wonderful. I will link both of those games down in the description in case you wanna check them out. But they are current family favorites. If you were a superhero, what superpower would you like to have and why? I like to have laser vision because I can just see through everything, shoot at anything. <laughs> what would you do with the, the shooting one? To get bad stuff away. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say this giraffe. guy. You were gonna say giraffe? Yeah, because. Is that your guess? Long no, wait, I'm still thinking. Oh, okay. okay awesome. Long legs. Oh, does it live in the savannah? Yes. Okay, I'll try giraffe. Locking Are it you in? Sure. I mean, I still have one more guess. Do you want to sure. ask another question, though? Are you 100% sure? You want to... Yeah, I'm trying. Okay. You are correct. I oh. have a long and, and fluffy tail. Small, fast, lives in the forest, has a long and fluffy tail. That made me think of fox again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a long, fluffy tail. <laughs> But it's not a fox. All right, activity number three is to do some vocabulary quick tasks. Now I have done plenty of videos on vocabulary in the past. We have this one, this one, and this one right here. Um, those top two up there are going to share more activities for developing vocabulary in your classroom. And then this one down here shares explicitly how I teach vocabulary in a K through two classroom. But in all three of those videos, we really talk about how there's such an extensive vocabulary gap among students that come into your classroom. And those videos provide activities and 
concrete ideas for kind of, you know, shrinking that gap and developing your students' vocabulary at a more rapid pace and in a more purposeful way. And these three quick tasks not only help with that, but they also help with students' expressive language. Now there's a ton of different types of activities you can do, these little quick tasks um, that help them with their expressive language and vocabulary, but I picked three that I found from this long list right here, and this is from the National Educational Psychology Service. The activities included in here were developed by educational psychologists to help students with their expressive language. I think there's like 27 activities in whole. I will also link that down below in the description, but the three that I'm going to share are ones that I have done personally with my students and they've really enjoyed. The first quick task is called categories, and this is one that you've probably seen or done in the past. You will simply put up a one minute timer and then you will name a category, and together with your class, you need to come up with as many things as you can within that category. So for example, you might set that timer and we will say, okay, the category is farm animals, go. And they'll start shouting a cow, pig, and you're writing it down or typing it up on your slides, however you're doing it. You're seeing how many you can come up with. You might say different types of fruits. You might say furniture. And again, students will just be throwing out as many ideas as they can and brainstorming however many things they can fit in that category in just one minute. Now, of course, this type of activity is going to help with vocabulary as we help students categorize new words, or at the end when we have this whole list, if there are any words on there that students didn't know, this is a great time to quickly teach what that word means and why it fits in that category. Um, but also this is a great way to have students practice their expressive language because once we have made that list, it only takes a minute, right? That's not where we end this activity. I would then have students share what we've learned using a complete sentence. So I might say, okay, I want everybody to turn to a partner and I want them to share in a complete sentence three of the farm animals we listed here. And then just like the question of the day, you might give them a sentence frame. So they might say, three animals that live on a farm are pigs, cows, and chickens. And then they've said it in a complete sentence. We can type it out. We could see those commas. We could see where the punctuation's going. We could see the capital letter at the beginning. It's a win, win, win. All right, the second vocabulary quick task students love is this one right here. It is called silly sentences. So the way this works is I will display a silly sentence and students have to change one or two words to make the sentence make sense. So here you can see it says, my hands hurt so much I can't walk. Now they'll be like, what? That doesn't make any sense. What word or words could we change to make this make sense? We could circle this word walk and say, wait a second, well, if my hands hurt so much, that doesn't affect my walking, but maybe I can't write. My hands hurt so much, I can't write. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. But we could also change another word. What if instead of my hands hurt so much, I can't walk, we circle hands and we change that to feet or legs or toes, something that would make sense. Now hopefully you can see here how this would really help students with their depth of vocabulary knowledge. They may have heard all those words in a sentence, but the way that they're kind of put out doesn't make sense based on their meaning, of course. So we need to change out and swap out some of those words for it to make sense. For another quick example, we have put the table on the chairs. And again, your students will say, wait a second, put the table on the chairs, that doesn't really make sense. Maybe we could change out chairs, put the table on the rug, that makes sense. Or maybe we're changing that word table. Instead of put the table on the chairs, maybe we're doing something small that would make sense about why it goes on a chair. So maybe we're saying, put the books on the chairs, right? Maybe everybody's getting a book. Again, students can kind of reason with this as they're sharing their examples of why it makes sense or why it doesn't. And the third quick task is called, what could you use to, dot, dot, dot. So it's called that because that is essentially the title. What could you use to catch a frog, paint a picture if you don't have a paintbrush, wake you up in the morning, so the beginning is always what could you use? And here students need to again use that depth of their vocabulary knowledge to think about what items actually do or what items would make sense. What could you use to catch a frog? And there's going to be more than one answer. We might use a net. We might make a trap out of different items. There are so many different things your students might come up with and as long as it makes some sort of logical sense, then it works. And just like the categories activity I shared, I would want students to go ahead and answer this in a complete sentence. So I could use a net to catch a frog. I could set an alarm to wake me up in the morning and so on. But these are just three very kind of quick tasks that you can really do at any time. 
Um, these are not, you could do them at morning meeting. These aren't very structured. These are like, instead of playing Simon Says, we can do a quick little vocabulary task. Um, you might wanna do this before a writing time. If you are brainstorming things that you're going to be writing about or if students are going to write in a journal, um, you could do one of these activities to kind of get their brains working beforehand, to get them expressing themselves orally before they write things down. So there you have three different effective and engaging activities to help students develop their oral language. Just for a quick recap, we have implement a question of the day, play some fun games, and I shared those two that I love with you, and then also do these vocabulary quick tasks. As always, everything I mentioned in this video will be linked down in the description below in case you want to check out more. I hope you were able to see throughout this video just how easy to implement these activities are and how not only are they going to help students develop their vocabulary, but it's also going to help them with their expressive language. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.